I missed. You're watching Calitids, and these are my top 10 science project ideas. Number one, a balsa wood bridge. This is a fantastic project for anybody with uh, not that much money and a bit of time on their hands. With enough time and investment, you can really learn a lot about bridge building with, uh, with trusses, arches, other bridge words. Just get some balsa wood sticks, some wood glue, and go to town. I've actually participated in, uh, in two separate bridge building competitions. The first one, I actually spent many hours working on the bridge, and then I woke up the day of the competition, and um, I overslept, so I missed it. Uh, so roll around next year, I entered the same competition. So in the contest, you could either build your bridge for strength or you could build it for looks. And um, I figured I had no chance to, to win aesthetics, so I went for strength. And I ended up taking home a, a second place trophy that day, and it was really cool, um, in the wrong category. Yeah, we ended up taking second in aesthetics. So if there's a lesson to this, it's that you'll always succeed at what you're not trying at. Number two, buoyant fruits. This is another one for short on cash, but you don't have as much time on your hands. So what you want to do is you want to get some kind of a, a bucket of water, something that you can uh, see clearly on the outside. And I would take all different kinds of fruits like bananas, oranges, apples, even different kinds of or colors of apples. And uh, I would take them and check if they sink or float first. If they sink, then I want you to take them, put them at the top of the water and clock how much time it takes for it to hit the bottom. If they float, I want you to take them put them all the way to the bottom and clock how much time it takes for it to hit the surface. Right, number three, we got paper boats. All right, this one is probably one of the simplest and uh, cheapest. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get just a bunch of paper and a bowl full of water. And uh, you're going to want to start building all different kinds of uh, paper boats out of this. You can look up tutorials online of how to fold different kind of boats or you can just build your own. Um, and what you wanna do is get a stack of quarters and start putting quarters inside each boat to see how many quarters each one can take before it just pfft, sinks. If you don't really want the, the soaking in of the water to be an issue, what you're gonna wanna do is get some kind of uh, some kind of a water repellent, I would suggest Scotchgard, and just spray the bottom or even the interior if you want to, just to make sure that nothing happens to your boat and that it'll stay afloat while you're doing the experiment. Number four, we got a parachute soldier. This one's a bit of a stretch. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have to design the guy by yourself. And you can either focus the project solely around that, the the building of the guy. Um, what you could do is you could use popsicle sticks, plastics, you could use different different kind of materials. Um, if you're older, if you're in high school and you have access to some kind of a 3D printer, um, I would suggest doing that and you could even go into detail about how you made the coating, where you got it from, uh, what it's printed out of, all different kinds of things like that. Um, if you're wanting to focus more on the parachute, you're going to want to cut a bunch of different shapes of parachutes out of different kinds of materials like you can use rubber you can use almost like tablecloth um, you can use like uh, really flexible paper almost like the almost like the thinness of uh, Bible paper that would work too. Right, number five we got a lava lamp. Alright guys this one is quick and simple and probably one of my favorites because I like to look at things that are that are nice that catch my attention so all that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some kind of a cool bottle whether it be a, a coke bottle or any kind of any kind of glass or honestly plastic if you really wanted to use it so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get um, a bunch of oil and a bunch of water. So now if you remember from science class, oil and water do not mix, so these go perfectly together. So what you're going to want to do before you put them together inside the bottle, you're going to want to take some food coloring and color the water whatever color you want. So that way whenever you put them in, you're going to see two distinct layers or just a, a little bit of the water at the bottom. So when you flip it over, the water is going to rush to the bottom, creating that lava lamp look and a bunch of little bubbles, and it'll really look cool and give you a really nice little project that you can make. Number six, we got a DIY wind turbine. I'm a fan of all things renewable energy, whether it be solar panels, wind turbines, um, anything with hydroelectric, nuclear, anything like that. So all that you're going to do with this one is you're going to have to design some kind of a propeller, or you can even buy one if you don't want to go that in depth. Um, the issue with it is going to be altering it in order to uh, turn a small generator. Um, they make little hand generators or little hand cranks that you can get that would work perfectly fine for this with just a little bit of altering. Honestly, if you have enough money, you can get one that shows the wattage inside it. And that's really cool because it'll show other people how much energy that you're actually generating. And the uh, last thing that you're going to need is uh, I would suggest some kind of little light bulb or something that you can hook it up to to show that, yes, I am, in fact, generating this electricity. Number seven, we got calculating the circumference of the Earth. All right, I don't want to give away how to do this one, but I am going to tell you that it is going to take kind of a high level of math. I would say somewhere around pre-calc in high school, 
or uh, maybe Algebra 2. The actual solving, I would say, isn't really the best part of this one. So what would actually be the best part would be explaining how er er Eratosthenes did it in the first place. So the way he did this one was he used the sun at different positions in the day as well as shadow length in order to calculate the circumference of the Earth. As you may be able to tell, this is one of the most important calculations to ever have existed, and he was very accurate in doing so. I wouldn't say that it is as important as maybe discovering the age of the Earth or the number pi. However, this was necessary in order to kickstart mathematics all over the world. Not for just a specific group of people like the Greeks or Romans, but really for everybody. Number eight, liquid nitrogen ice cream. Guys, this is one of my favorites. I know that every year when I was younger, we had kind of a science day at school in which a scientist would come in and he would do a bunch of little experiments and shows for us. Well, everyone's favorite one was the liquid nitrogen ice cream. So what he did was he took just a regular recipe for ice cream, mixed it all together in a bowl, and he pulls out this massive jug of liquid nitrogen and just starts dumping it into the bowl as his assistant like whipped it up. After about a minute or two of this, he ended up with some of the most delicious soft serve ice cream I've ever had in my entire life. So all you really have to do for this one is you need an ice cream recipe, all the ingredients, mix all of them together, and instead of doing the freezing step, which would take several hours, uh, you're going to use the liquid nitrogen instead and begin pouring it in until it gets to the consistency that you would like. So this is a great one if you have access to liquid nitrogen. I know that a lot of people don't, but if you do by any chance, I would really suggest doing this. If nothing else, the crowd appeal on this one will surely buy you some points somewhere. And I must say, before anybody attempts to do this, please be careful with this stuff, guys. This stuff can be really dangerous, and if you don't know what you're doing, you could end up getting hurt. One of the main things is don't breathe it in, because you'll see uh, like fumes coming off of it. That's really just the nitrogen escaping back into gas form. So if you were to breathe that in, it would rob you of oxygen and you might end up passing out on the ground. Number nine, we got instant ice. So this one I saw firsthand one of my years in high school. I was sitting in math class and a teacher walked in and she had two bottles of water. One of them was frozen and one of them was still water. So she walks up to the teacher that was in the, in the class and she goes, hey, isn't this weird? And she hands him the bottle that's not frozen. And he kind of looks at it for a second, opens the cap, lets a little bit of air in, shuts the cap, and smacks it on the desk. And the bottle, right before all of our eyes, turned into solid ice. This blew my absolute mind, and I immediately wanted to do it. I thought it was so cool. So all you guys are going to need for this one is you're just going to need a freezer and a case of water. So what you're going to do is you're going to begin to put the water in the freezer. The sweet spot for freezing a bottle of water is somewhere around two hours. You may have to uh, check your freezer and adjust this according to. But you want to find the perfect amount of time it takes to freeze that bottle into ice, or at least begin to. So at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to subtract 15 minutes, and you're going to have a bottle in there for that long, pull it out, and just like my teacher did, you're going to uncap it, let a little bit of air in, recap it, and then smack it on something. If it goes well, right before your eyes, your bottle should just turn into ice out of nowhere. So the way this happens is water can be too pure in the bottle form to the point of where it resists freezing a lot unless you add some kind of impurity for the crystallization to latch onto. So that's what you're doing by letting air in. Number 10, we have the speeds of light. So this one I attempted to do, I believe my sophomore year of high school. So for this, what you're going to do is you're going to test the speed of light and see if it changes through different mediums, such as air, water, um, corn syrup, and any other thing that you can think of. So you're going to set up a camera, a beam of light, and test how fast it's going through that medium. If the experiment goes well, you'll find that it will differ between all of them. I remember that I wanted to do this one. I had my setup, everything, and I began to film with my own camera, and that was when I realized that 30 frames a second was totally not enough to do this. So. This one is going to be really good for college students that have access to some kind of a lab with high-speed cameras like that. Most high schools would not have anything that high-tech, but if you're, say, a physics student and you have a really good professor, he might let you use it in a lab and turn this into a really cool project that will blow everybody else away. Alright guys, those are my 10 science project ideas. If you like any of them or are planning on using them, 
let me know in the comment section down below. After I posted my video on the uh, logic of climate change, I realized afterwards that I posted it in 480p and I felt so bad because I actually did record it in HD for you guys, so I'm sorry and I will fix that in the future. I wanted to thank everybody who watched this video. It means so much to me that I only posted like one or two videos and I'm already starting to get a couple of views. Make sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell down below if you want to see more of me. I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later!